Great, so we're live again. Um, I don't think I'm the only one, but one of my favourite things to do when I'm preparing a presentation is to see how many of Alison's uh, beautiful illustrations I can fit in. Um, so this is our last presentation of the day. We're super excited to have Alison Hall here today. Uh, and I'm just going to let you amaze us. Wonderful. Well, first, I want to say thank you so much for inviting me to give this talk on my art. I'm Allison. I teach environmental data science at UC Santa Barbara, and I'm also our studio's artist in residence. And I really appreciate everyone uh, staying till the end of the day on this Thursday so that I could tell you a little bit about my thoughts on um, illustrating R and creative contributions for our education and engagement. So one thing that I think is really important to remember when we think about uh, engaging with learners is that whatever our experience has been, learning R or to code in general can be really scary and it can feel like there's this big moat that we have to cross or we might not feel like we belong. Uh, there might be some sense of gatekeeping involved and it can be really intimidating because it's not only learning a new language, but oftentimes learning to work in a new language in an entire new world, like in our studio. And the other part is that not only can R be a little bit intimidating to learn, but it's also an investment with the rate at which new amazing tools and resources are coming out. It's really important that learners understand that to keep up with new things in R, we need to invest in learning them. And for those of us who are already totally on board, when we see something new added, it's really exciting. We're like, isn't this amazing that there are 10 new things coming out today? But we can imagine that that also might be intimidating or even overwhelming for learners. And what that means is that when we want someone to make an investment in a scary thing, sometimes we need to put in some extra work. And this is a thing that we do all the time. For example, sometimes we make vegetables look like cute animals to encourage people to eat them who might otherwise not. But if we're thinking about maybe an example that doesn't only apply to your kids or your uh, nieces and nephews or other younger people in your life, we do this all the time with adults too. So when people are trying to sell a home, then oftentimes that empty home is staged with furniture and pictures and freshly baked cookies so that the people who are considering making the investment in that home feel like they can belong in it, so they can imagine themselves living there. And this is a really worthwhile investment to stage houses. It makes sales go faster and it increases sale price. So there are real benefits to working hard to make things look nice and feel welcoming. So I think that we should think as educators about how we can use that when we're teaching R. So when we're thinking about R, can we stage it to help learners be able to imagine themselves succeeding there? So just like we might if we're trying to get a prospective home buyer to think like, yeah, this is a place for me. Can we stage R and learning R in a way that immediately makes learners who are expecting to be intimidated feel like, oh yeah, like this is a place that I also belong in. And creative contributions can be one way to do this. And uh, there are many different ways that we need to work across the board to make data science, statistics, and quantitative methods in general more inclusive and accessible. And creative contributions are one way. So I wanted to present a couple of different things that uh, creative contributions can do. So the first is that when we're teaching, creative contributions can increase engagement, learning, and retention. So for example, I was inspired when I was teaching data science to my students, like I know functions are awesome and exciting, 
But if you're a learner, you can imagine if what's behind a person who is teaching you on the screen is documentation and screenshots of code, like maybe that would not be the most inspiring thing. So there might be an opportunity using creative artwork to create visuals that offer a nicer and more welcoming entryway for learners. And at the same time, they can also help learners engage and retain information about that function. So for example, this is an illustration of the string squish function uh, from the string R package that removes leading, trailing, and repeated interior white space from strings, which is a super handy function. And these monsters are showing you how this helps you to uh, remove these, this excess white space in your strings. So it can increase engagement, learning, and retention. So it really has a learning benefit for people who might learn visually. And it also can make new functions or packages or ideas more inviting. The second thing is that creative contributions can really help to clarify what can otherwise be kind of abstract or vague concepts. For example, I worked with Dr. Julie Lowndes on a series recently describing the benefits of data organization in tidy format, which is kind of hard when you're, or hard or maybe uninspiring if you're just showing people a data frame spreadsheet. So we can use artwork to try to visualize and really capture the concepts that might otherwise be a little bit challenging for learners. The next and one that is just as important as the didactic or teaching focus aspects of artwork is that creative contributions can make R more welcoming, which as we seek to make it a place that's more diverse and inclusive and welcoming to learners from all different experiences and backgrounds, we need to work at this. And so I think that art can be one way that we can show that we are really putting in the effort to try to make our communities uh, and coding in general more welcoming. Creative contributions can also show empathy. So it can be a way to be a more empathetic teacher and peer for people who might not be as jazzed about uh, R as you might already be. So recognizing that not everyone is just like stoked on R at this point and that we need to be thoughtful about the way that we show empathy to other people who are learning and working really hard to build these really challenging and important skills. And creative contributions can be a really meaningful way to help build communities and make them more vibrant and welcoming. So these are some uh, hex stickers and buttons from different communities. I did not create all of these. I had to include the Our Lady Salapa uh, hex because it's my absolute favorite one. But creative contributions can really give people a sense of belonging and community, which is really important if we're asking people to make a long-term investment in learning and being a part of R and data science. And importantly, I create illustrations, but this is certainly not the only way that people can contribute. There are many people doing really incredible creative artwork and other and adding other creative contributions. These are just a few that I always see pop up that just put a smile on my face. Uh, for example, Amelia McNamara's R Hex logo dress, which I think is fantastic, and you can also buy that fabric. Uh, Danielle Navarro and Thomas Lynn Peterson's beautiful generative art in R, which I think is not only gorgeous as artwork on its own, but also that provides an opportunity for people to learn R while creating artwork, which is so awesome. Uh, Charlotte Gelfin's needlework, you can see up here a needle, needlework with ggplot2 and the tidyverse, which I love so much. But also like Chelsea's TikToks and Tyler Morgan Wall's Ray Render and Ray Shader to make videos, uh, Desiree DeLeon's R and art and stats artwork that is just so engaging for people at all different levels. And I think even looking beyond this, we need to think about like the breadth of creative contributions that are as diverse as the community that we want to build. So things like baking and music, ceramics and sculpture, design 
poetry and how can we include art not only in the things we produce but how can we encourage learners to uh, create artwork and activities that help them learn so in summary i think that non-coding creative contributors really help to make coding a more welcoming place for learners and users at all levels and what I would like to ask of everyone is, this means that we should be supporting creative contributions. And just being invited to this conference is doing that. So highlighting artwork and creative contributions, sharing artwork, including it in your materials, thinking about how it can make your materials more engaging and welcoming. The second is collaborating with creative contributors. It's a really amazing way to expand the outreach and engagement that you can get from other people when you're trying to teach or give a talk. It's a really incredible tool uh, for outreach and engagement. So collaborate with the creative co contributors. And finally, I would love to ask everyone to ask yourself, how can you contribute creatively? Because most people, even if it's like a secret hobby that you have, most people do some sort of creative work. And again, thinking that we should have as many diverse creative contributors as we have diverse community members already in R and hoping to build that community in the future. Um, I think it's really exciting to think about building the uh, creative contributors who are offering materials and resources for all of us who are working in R and data science. And I hope that when we all contribute and value creative contributions, which I am really excited to see in the R community and coming from R Studio, our values that uh, they are supporting, that we can make what can originally be an intimidating topic and field and skill set something that feels more welcoming and engaging so that we can help learners make this long term investment in R to benefit their careers and futures. So thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today, and I would love to answer a few questions if we have time. Thank you very much. I think people are getting a bit emotional in the comments because some of these are just so adorable. Um, so I think there are actually, so most of the questions that have come up aren't actually for you, but rather who in the GSR community is going to be our artists and residents. <laughs> um, I think I'll just take this opportunity to do a, a call out. We do have our own HSR sticker. Um, I think actually this designed by me a few years ago. It's not the most creative of stickers, but rather just a logo on a hex. But I think I'd be very happy if someone designed a, a fancier one. Um, okay, we've got a few questions that have now popped up. Uh, so the first one is, where do you get your inspiration? Yeah, great question. Uh, the re Really, my inspiration is from my students and the look of terror that they have on their face when, when they know that they're going to have to learn code for the first time. And, uh, and then seeing like that they have a smile on their face if the first interaction they have with a new function is presented as a, a friendly drawing. Um, so for me, it's mostly like, what am I going to be teaching this week? What's going to feel intimidating for students? How can I draw a picture that's going to make that less intimidating for them? Um, so, so I think that uh, my students in the R community are really what inspire me. Great. And what tools do you use? Yeah, I was expecting this one. I use uh Procreate. Um, Procreate on iPad. Uh, so I have. Um, it's a, I, I think it's still $10. It's great. The only limitation is it doesn't create a vector uh, format files. So um, it, it creates flat files. But otherwise, if you're an artist just looking to draw digitally and post easily, it is fantastic. Excellent. There's also a question about whether or not you'd like to put in a design for the next NHSR hex sticker. Um, I won't put you on the spot, but if you do, just um, You've got our emails. Well, thank you uh, for the interest. What I will say is I, I, I love designing hex stickers. I think it's really great to see if there's a person who's part of that community uh, who can create it. And, and I think there usually is. Like, like, I think there will be somebody, and I'm happy to help out, but I think it would be very cool to have somebody who's part of the NHS community 
um, who can contribute that artwork. Great. I suggest we do a shout out on Twitter later for uh, for people who might be able to design a better egg sticker. Um, so we've got one more question here. How long does it take you to make an illustration? <laughs> <laughs> it totally depends, and there is no rhyme or reason to which ones get the most traction. So um, usually for my little monster illustrations, anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours. And without fail, the ones that get liked and shared the most are the ones that I spend the least time on. So I'm still trying to learn that lesson. Uh, and let me just go through to make sure I haven't mm, missed any of the questions. Uh, well, here's a good one. I don't consider myself very creative. What can I do to improve my creative creativity? Yeah, I, I think this is a, a fascinating one. Um, is usually when people say I'm not very creative, there there is a way that maybe is just not um, traditionally valued. Like for example. I consider Carson's work to make like beautiful themes and designs that you might have seen in a previous talk. Like I'm like that is an amazing creative contribution that makes people feel like they would want to work uh, with that. And and I think that thinking about what are ways that I offer um, like design input or that I just make something look more welcoming with my color scheme choices or the palettes that I use. Uh, but I, I think that like the arts in general is something that we desperately need more of in science. And the other thing that I think if, if people are like, I don't create, I don't, I'm not a creative contributor. Uh, first, I, I bet we could find a way that you are. And second, that's okay. Like nobody should feel pressured. Um, but maybe just feel empowered to like include artwork in your talks and uh, and include other creative work when you present and even things like in in Tom's talk right like the different memes and gifts with Captain Marvel I'm like those are 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 creative ways to make an audience feel more engaged where you don't have to be the one maybe putting all the effort into creating it. Great. Um, I think we've answered all the questions and it's actually past six o'clock here. So I'm going to say another big thank you to you and hand over to Anastasia. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Alison. It was amazing. Uh, now you can see there is quite a lot of chats going on. Uh, everyone is very impressed and very excited. Uh, you are now free to go, uh, but thank you again for joining us. Uh, and I'm just going to do a quick wrap up for the day. And yes, Luca, I could see your message, but it's not the end of the conference. I know it felt like the end of the conference because it was amazing, but in fact, we have one more day. Uh, so uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to say bye to Alison as well. Thank you. Um, so, yes, uh, hopefully everyone can see my screen and everyone can see uh, Friday. Uh, so we are meeting tomorrow as usually quarter past nine. Uh, we will have a careful morning. Please join us if you can. But I do appreciate it's quite early for uh, everyone. Uh, we will have a series of talks. And as discussed earlier today, we will try to build in some nice breaks. Uh, and uh, Richard promised to build in one in his talk, by the way. Uh, and we will be closing uh, towards 12. So uh, our key, uh, keynote speaker tomorrow is uh, Federico Coco and John Byrne Murdoch. So you possibly all heard about John. He does amazing uh, charts about COVID. And Alberto Cairo mentioned him yesterday. And uh, yes, so closing remarks from Mohammed Mohammed. And we will have social hours. So this is an interesting one. I hope everyone received emails today morning. And if you didn't receive any email from us at all today, please uh, drop us a line in our uh, nhs.net uh, email. I'm just typing it in right now. Um, so we'll have social hour in Zoom, which is going to be just a formal chat. Uh, so please join if you can. Uh, however, I don't need to know, you don't need to say to you that uh, it might be limited places uh, because our Zoom account isn't unfortunately unlimited. Uh, but I'm sure we'll be able to accommodate everyone who wish to attend. Um, so, and I think this is pretty much all from me for today. Uh, thank you again for joining. I hope we will be able to join tomorrow uh, for our plenary sessions and I hope you will have, have a lovely uh, afternoon, evening or morning, well, based on where you are in the world right now. Uh, so goodbye for today and I will see you tomorrow.